Charles Neer uh, said that there was no harder operation in all of orthopedics than the revision of a failed open treatment of a proximus fracture. And I think these are really challenging fractures if they're not treated correctly right from the beginning. And complications occur much more commonly than I think we actually recognize or appreciate. So what this talk is not about is all the efforts that we undertake to actually avoid putting a reverse in. For example, this patient with a head splitting fracture who is in, in his 50s, and you could do things, uh, percutaneous pinning, get it to heal, and get pretty good function. You want to try to avoid you know, to putting a reverse in the younger patient. It's also not about patients that have, are younger patients who are treated well with ORIF. What this talk is about, however, is about patients who have comminuted intraarticular fractures, four-part fractures, and what this talk particularly is about is the small piece of bone which really is the cornerstone of your outcomes. It is the keystone to actually having a good outcome, the greater tuberosity. Um, and really what we want to do is how to optimize this small fragment of bone as we uh, endeavor to restore function and remove pain from these patients with these complex fractures. Now, hemiarthroplasty for me is of historic interest. I rarely, if ever, think there's many indications for it. Um, but even in that case, even though we don't do it, even if you look across the literature, the literature is replete with articles from Boileau and from Robinson and others that basically talk about the key component of the greater tuberosity in the outcomes. And back in 2002, uh, Pascal Boileau wrote a sentinel paper talking about how important tuberosity position is for overall function. Our goal is to actually get anatomic restoration of the tuberosity. In this case here, in this fracture that we fixed with the arthritis reverse system, we have, I think, about as close as, uh, as we can achieve in restoring the tuberosity in this fracture setting. And many others have commented about this. This isn't like a novel idea about tuberosity healing after reverse. John Levy actually uh, has published a paper recently looking at what he calls the black and tan technique, where he keeps the cementation distal and proximally he bone grafts in order to prevent any thermal damage uh, that may interfere with greater tuberosity healing. In his paper, he recounts the data across the literature on the healing rate of the tuberosity with an overall rate of about 72%. But as I looked at this data, I remarked that many of the patients that had the higher uh, tuberosity healing rates actually had constructs at 135 degrees. So it started to make me ponder a little about how important that role is. Now, we do know that reverse arthroplasty clearly is superior to hemiarthroplasty uh, in these four-part fractional fractures. And if we look at papers back to 2009 and earlier, we, say that those, we see those patients have better abduction, they have enhanced anterior elevation, better constant scores, and better pain scores. But it's interesting, in this one paper, they actually showed worse external rotation. And if you look carefully at the x-rays here, you can see in the, in the conventional arthroplasty, hemiarthroplasty, we see the tuberosity is healed, but down here we see uh, the tuberosity has resorbed. And those are really important things to notice for your outcome. When we put in a arthroplasty, reverse arthroplasty, we distalize the entire component. And what happens in the fracture setting is that we tend to optimize the tension without the tuberosities attached. And it's my belief, and we have some data to support, that we actually further distalize the humeral component. And that may put the tuberosities at increased strain. So whereas when we distalize about 15 millimeters in a non-fracture situation, we're distalizing almost a centimeter more than that in a fracture situation. And if you look at this image here, you can see the gap where there's relative inferior translation of the greater tuberosity at 155 degrees versus uh, the 135 uh, over here. And so our goal is actually try to get the tuberosities to heal, and if they experience increased strain, they're not going to. So the technique that we use as we fix fractures and have always used is meticulous suture technique. Uh, and then we performed 135 versus 155 degree retrospective review in all of our cases over the last four years. And we did this black and tan cement technique, which we have been doing long before it was published, but something I think is valu a valuable addition to our technique. So I'm going to share some of our x-rays. So here we are at 135 degrees using the Arthrex reverse. So all these are fracture cases, and you can see in this here, 64-year-old, a year out with healed tuberosity. Here we are, 61-year-old, six months out with a healed tuberosity. Here's one of our failures in that group. 
A 72-year-old, and you can see the tuberosity has melted here. It's resorbed. And another 70-year-old patient here 10 months out. And so those are some representative samples of the 135 angle. Here we are at 155 degrees. Here is a 67-year-old patient who's two, a little more than two years out with resorption of the tuberosity. Here we got it right. We got the tuberosity to heal in this instance. Here, resorption of the tuberosity again at 155. Resorption of the tuberosity again with a fracture stem at 155. And another case where we have resorption at 155. And one, even with a different component, using the tornier component, you can see six months out x-ray uh, with resorption of the tuberosity. And finally, one last one where you can see where the tuberosity did heal in place. So I want to present our results. And basically what we see is that at 135, we had tuberosity healing in 93% of our cases and only 73% of our cases in patients that had a 155-degree construct. We also had enhanced active external rotation in the group that had tuberosity healing uh, over 135 over 155. But look at the difference in the first measurement. We've actually distalized 17 millimeters more at 155 degrees than we did at 135. And our subject to shoulder values were not statistically different, but I think we can see that uh, the tuberosity healing clearly improved their motion. So what are the biomechanics and why is this important? Well, I went to MIT to get my MBA, and uh, it's kind of an interesting place because there are a lot of really brilliant engineers there, and they, have, they find interesting times to actually think about some of the complex problems that I pose to them. This is no joke, the urinals at MIT with a chalkboard above them. So I worked with uh, Dan Massimini, uh, PhD biomechanic uh, expert there, and we started looking at some of the stress uh, strain curves, looking at 135 versus 155. And what we saw with the tuberosity displacement at the very bottom is a 20% increase in strain across the construct at 155 over 135. So I think that's really instrumental. Obviously, tissues under tension do not heal, and obviously we think that's instrumental in this. So in conclusion, I think no matter what we do, we need the meticulous suture technique. Mark Frankel showed how important that was with the round-the-world sutures and the compressive technique, and that's obviously a cornerstone of what we need to do. I use the 135 position on the arthritic stem, uh, and I think that's also really important in order to optimize healing of the tuberosity. And I do think the black and tan cement technique is something people should uh, evolve to because I think it does keep the thermal damage away. And I had the option on this stem to do 135 or 155, which is the unique and great aspect of this stem. But I do think it's important that the one, at, for our fractures, and I would encourage you to look at this critically in your own practice, to think that 135 is the right solution. You will anatomically improve your outcomes, if you, you'll, mar you'll markedly improve your outcomes if you anatomically reconstruct the tuberosity. And these are the results of some of our patients with the arthritic stem, and obviously these are the results that we're all looking to, uh, to capture.